So now, <laughs> for the final question, we're going to go one, two, three, yay or nay, is Atmos worth it? Kevin. I'm going to go with... So I have gathered you here together today to do a test to determine how good Atmos actually is. You're going to watch four clips, each clip twice. One of the clips will have the height speakers enabled. The other clip, the height speakers will be disabled. You're then going to determine which clip is which, which one you like better, and then based on those clips, whether you think the extra cost and effort is worth it to have Atmos. Everybody got that? Any questions? Nope. Okay. I provided lunch. <laughs> so somehow, we managed to make it through watching eight movie clips. Four, wow. four clips, twice each. And somehow, somehow, we were able to accomplish that. Go um, us. Well done. Well done, family. Okay. Um, okay. So, to recap, we watched which movies? Who wants to read them off? We watched Blade Runner. We watched Midway, 300, and Ready Player One. Okay. Awesome. So, the scene in Blade Runner was the scene where they go out on the balcony and there's a lot of rain coming from overhead yes okay so let's see who thought clip one had the atmos speakers enabled and who thought clip two had the atmos speakers enabled kevin we'll start with you i thought it was clip two you thought it was clip two okay now i also see. chose two me too interesting nice. you are all wrong oh what? come on what <laughs> Okay. All right. That's actually really annoying. Now we're going to go to clip two, which was Midway, which was the the uh, the bombing run on the uh, aircraft carrier. Okay. Which clip, one or two, had the Atmos speakers enabled? I thought it was one. I chose two. I <laughs> chose one. It was clip two. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Now uh -oh. we, we are going... soul is breaking. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I've never been so disappointed. <laughs> okay, so now clip three, three hundred. Which clip had the Atmos enabled, Kevin? I thought it was one. I thought I chose one. I also chose one, but I got a little distracted. That's true. It was one. Good. Yay! Okay. Okay, we got one. Okay. And now clip four. Which was? Ready Player One. Ready Player One, the race scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which clip had Atmos enabled? Kevin. I thought it was two. I yeah, chose it two. one. They said two. It was clip two. <laughs> so it's 50, okay. 50 so, okay. Right. so now I want you all to go okay. through. Let's, let's, right. let's figure out what, what percentage we had here of being correct, first of all. So, Kevin, how many of the four did you get correct? I got one and two wrong and three and four right. So you got 50%. Yes. Melanie? I think I also got 50%. We so, all got 50%. Yeah. yeah. What, 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 what did you, what, 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 which clips did you choose? Two, two, one, one. So, yeah, you got 50%. Uh, yeah. Or no, no. Someone you... wouldn't turn on the lights when oh, I was trying no. to write. <laughs> so... Oh, sure. That's that's your excuse. I got three of them no. wrong. You got you got fifty fifty. The yeah, answers are one it. two one two. I did yeah, two one got... one two. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> I got too. half. You got half right. How many did you get right? Half. And I had the same thing as Samantha. So all of us got exactly fifty percent. But we didn't right. even get the same fifty percent right. Statistically. That's right. Well, me and Samantha got the same 50%. Something I really noticed, though, was that, like, in the Blade Runner, whenever I thought that it was the ones that disabled the height speakers, I thought that it was really pushing volume to, like, the ones on the side and especially behind. Like, especially, like, in Ready Player One when they were picking up coins or, like, like the coins were, like, falling from the sky and everything. I didn't hear it from the height speakers at all. Like, it was getting pushed really strongly through the side and back speakers. Which is also what I thought in Blade Runner, which I ended up getting wrong, where I thought it was kind of, like, a bit of a circle and it was really pushing dialogue through the main speakers behind the screen and then with two i thought that i heard stuff above me but i guess i was just playing tricks on myself hmm interesting so i will say that like looking 
just around the room where the speakers are at. There's like roughly five feet of space from this one to the wall speaker. And maybe a little bit more like six feet from there to there. It's really diffi difficult to localize those sounds in terms of like there to there. Especially the one that I thought was really difficult, which ironically I think I got right, was midway. Because there were so many sounds coming from all over. Like there were just a yeah. lot of different sounds all at once coming from different channels. And it was a really cool and immersive experience, but it was difficult, I think, to say that there was something coming from those very specific points. Yeah. Actually, and there were so many other sounds at the yeah. same time. Something that I actually noticed, because I got 300 right, is that in the arrow scene, in the very first, like in the first one that we watched, the one with the height speakers, I noticed there was like, it was the arrow scene. So it, was, it had like this really like shrill part of the score at the beginning when the arrows were coming way up and everything. And there was like a really shrill, like prolonged sound or something and I was kind of like oh that's really interesting and when we listened to the second one I didn't hear that intense like high-pitched treble sound like nearly as strong hmm. huh that's interesting do you know where like which direction that sound was coming from I mean I well they were over the arrows yeah, like the arrows were, were coming up so it's oh. easy to just say it was from the height speakers because they were gotcha. on that time gotcha. but yeah. yeah interesting Samantha what did you think um I think this it sounded fuller when um, the high speakers were enabled. I mean, were not or were? Were. Like, which is interesting because the sound just goes and moves down to the other speakers when it, they're not enabled. But when they're on, it's like, it, it felt like there was like another level of sound added. So it's like, I listened, instead of trying to pick out specific sounds like you did, because I tried for the first two uh -huh. and it didn't work. Uh -huh. And so then I just listened to like, the level like all the sound coming from this direction and then looking to see if there was an added like depth of field for the sound is what helped me get the last two. Oh, interesting so so you kind of changed the way you were listening to the music or yeah. to the sound instead of trying to catch like specific things like oh that's like that plane is coming from overhead or that crash is like up there i just tried to listen to like how the sound filled the room yeah this isn't entirely related to the admo speakers themselves but i did notice that specifically in midway i was very distracted by the bass shakers in the chairs like they got very <laughs> intense <laughs> and it was a little bit hard to pinpoint like, I wasn't l listening specifically to, like, speaker outputs and, like, what was hitting me where. Like, it was easy to tell, like, oh, there's, like, a really sharp, like, coin sound coming from here. But at the same time, I was mostly looking for, like, not, like, frequency ranges. Like, the really low lows and how, like, high-pitched they would get sometimes and, like, how strong they would be. I'd say the one that was most distracting that I was most distracted during was 300 because I'd never seen that scene before. It was a really intense scene and then I was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be listening for <laughs> Yeah, for I did this. that with the second one. Um, did you get that one right? But I did get that yeah, one right okay. and I thought that that was a really, really cool effect. I don't know. Um, Blade Runner, I, since I knew there was going to be rain in the scene and I as assumed that it would be really loud coming from the, the high speakers, I expected that impact to be a little bit more pronounced than it was. Actually, when I uh, when I listened to Blade Runner um, with the first shot, for whatever reason, I think that like I managed to, like visualize like, oh, I'm hearing it in like this big like circle with like a big flat top, and then when it transitioned to the second one, I think I just kind of like automatically assumed it would be the one with the height speakers, which is why I kind of like felt a shift there. But I really don't know. It felt so... Like, with the rain, it's supposed to be all around you. So naturally, every speaker was enabled with the rain sound and very pronounced. And then there was dialogue coming from the front channels. And I guess with the second one, I just never caught that there was also rain coming from above. So now, <laughs> for the final question, we're going to go one, two, three, yay or nay... Is Atmos worth it? Kevin. I'm going to go with yes. Okay. I mean, I feel like given the percentage of these that I got right, it's hard to make a case for it. I guess it... I, I would say that the quality of the experiences was distinct enough that if you have the resources and the budget to 
to um, add those speakers in. Like like Sam said, I, I feel like in terms of like the fullness of the sound, um, you know, it, it feels like it's enhanced by more speakers. I also, I don't know, I'm thinking about like, am I biased to want to say that, that this is worth it because I, I think it's cool and I think it's great and everything. I don't, but I don't know how I can, how I can defend that, that logic based on how well I did at this test. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, like it sounds really cool to me, but also I don't, I don't know. Like I've always thought that, that, that the more speakers, the better, at least to, to the level that we have them. Um, I think it just depends on your how devoted you are to the quality of the sound and how much mm -hmm. you yeah. value it and your time and energy um, and money that you put into it because like for me personally I I don't think that I noticed it enough to justify it but for other people like it is it, like it it when you're making, when you're designing your theater yourself and you want it to be the way that you want it, um, and the sound is really important to you, I can see it being something that you would want to invest in. For me personally, no, but I'm also not a theater enthusiast, so. Okay. I would say that the difference in this test was so much more difficult to discern than it was in the 4k versus streaming test that we did yeah i would also say that even when i could tell that there was a difference it wasn't always super obvious which one was better mm. yeah. yeah does that make sense yeah. like because because i i felt like they were pretty distinct but clearly i didn't always identify where the sound was coming from accurately so yeah okay. Oh, I will say though, I feel like three hundred was pretty distinct. Like that was the one yeah. that I marked was the most noticeable too. Yeah, yeah. three hundred is the one I got distracted in. By Me too. I ended up getting distracted streaking. in the second one because I'm like, oh, so. this is this is just a cool so movie. So you all it's got three hundred correct, right? Yes, we all yes. got that one correct, and we all felt that one was the most noticeable one. Like I said, for Midway, there were just so many different sounds yeah. coming from so many different yeah. places that it was difficult to to pinpoint specific sounds coming from different channels. Yeah. And I would say that that, in some respects, that was similar in Ready Player One, except that in Re Ready Player One, there were a lot of sounds and they were pretty localized. Like, yeah. yeah. But I, I also got that one wrong, so I don't know. Like, I got yeah. that one Something right. that I noticed, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, <laughs> but um, and when it was we obvious watch. to me. It, so. Ready Player One was obvious to you. It, it yeah, was. that one I said was yeah. really hard. The thing so. is that, like, I um, we actually just watched the first clip and already marked on the second one as yeah, that one's gonna have the height speakers. Um, oh, interesting. And I did the same for Blade Runner too. I was so confident that the second clip in Blade Runner was the one with the with like the height speakers enabled, but I think like looking back on it, the rain in the first clip was a lot sharper. I guess like it was a lot easier to hear individual raindrops, which I think is what gave me this fake visual of it and I think that's why I was so confident like oh the second one has to be the one that has the height speakers because there's so much like sharp rain noises in it and everything because the same thing happened in Ready Player One when I heard the coins like I literally felt like there was something in my left ear since it's so close to those two speakers right there where it was just like everything was coming into my left ear and I was kind of like oh interesting so like it's really strong in the side speakers. Huh. Okay, and that that could be how you're placed, like yeah. with yeah. you guys being on the edges and you being in the middle. Maybe maybe that makes a difference. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, maybe people people who are better trained at this would actually <laughs> something I thought that would be very <laughs> interesting is idea. instead of telling us what speakers we're looking out for and like is this Atmos or not, it's just listen to the sound and tell me which one you like more, oh. and then figure out which ones they picked. Oh, okay, that would be interesting. Yeah. That would yeah. be an interesting experiment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thanks for watching.